Right, welcome back everybody. A long awaited video on this Vauxhall Vivaro. This is a 2014, it's the 1.6 by turbo model. Uh, long wheelbase. So what we're doing today, I know the title of this video says we're doing a service on it. It's a part service because I couldn't get all the parts. So what we're actually doing today is the oil filter, the air filter, the cabin filter and oil. Uh, they didn't have the diesel filter in stock. So we won't be doing that today. It holds quite a bit of oil, this. I think it's uh, 7.4 or 7.6 litres. So it's coming a bit pricey, the oil for this. It's coming at 76 pounds, I think it did. There was another option for some oil for 68. But for the sake of eight quid, it was the difference between trade oil and the recommended for this engine. So I went for the recommended. There probably weren't a lot of difference in it, but what we've got to do first is, I've never worked on one of these before, engine wise. So we've got to locate the oil filter housing. I've had a quick scout along the top of the engine bay here. I can't see it. I think it's one of the plastic ones because it's a cartridge filter. So we're going to be looking for that. Maybe it's underneath somewhere. The cabin filter is normally behind the glove box or behind the scuttle panel somewhere. But again, I can't see much here. So hopefully that's just behind the glove box. That'll just pop out hopefully. And uh, air filter's just here. I believe I've seen on someone's video when, that was doing one of these Vauxhall Vivaros that it's easier just to whip these two bolts out here, just to take this little panel out to get to reach the screws behind this panel. So for the sake of two bolts, we'll whip that out as well, change this air filter, and hopefully it shouldn't take too long this job. Now the van is hot, I've just done a, a 40 mile round trip in it. So it has been sitting for about 15 minutes now. So we'll just bear that in mind when we come to drop the oil, that it's gonna be very hot still. So we'll probably start with the air filter, have a look at the cabin filter, and then we'll head underneath the van and check out where this drain plug is and the oil filter. So I'm just gonna get a few tools and then we'll get stuck in. Right folks, a point of further investigation, the cabin filter is actually on the driver's side. So normally it's on the passenger side, as I say, but it's just behind this panel apparently. So you pull at the top here, just pull that little cover off. And it is a bit dark in here. So just there and there, there's a spring clip. So you just squeeze that together it's just on my hands so squeeze that together and it just pulls out this little uh cover there so and there's our filter just in there and uh, apparently they don't fit in very well you have to squash them in and out to get them situated and you have to sort them out once they're in situ sort of thing so let me just see if i can uh, pull this out while you're watching and these filters normally get overlooked during a service because, uh, oh, I see what they mean now. They are a nightmare to get in and out. Let me just drop you down a minute. All right, so, a lot of crap dropping out of here. Let's have a look at this. So as you can see, uh, chock a block with stuff so it's done its job this i should say this is probably the original one from new looking at the amount of stuff's in that and there's loads of it on the floor there that's fell out look yeah bloody loads in there that's terrible that so that's the stuff that comes in from the front of your engine and that gets filtered out before it comes out your air vents there so Otherwise, all that, if that filter's not in, all that stuff's just going to blow in your eyes. So we've got a new one here. And as you can see, they are marked airflow. So that will be going in that way. So the airflow will be coming into the cabin, you see. So I've just had to rest you there for the minute. Because uh, I say, it's a bit of a tight job getting in here. It's not the best design this. As you can see that's in now. So the idea is you've got to squash it up, push it right in and then let it spring back out on itself and it should put itself back into shape. So I'm happy with that. So we can go ahead now and stick that little uh, trap door back on. And that just 
pops in there like that. And then we can just put our little bit of trim back on. Just like that. So there we go. And there was a bit of crap there before, but all them brown leafy bits have come out. I could do have a new foot rubbers, look. I might treat it to a set of them. So it is pretty straightforward jobs. No tools necessary for this, but it is a bit fiddly as well. Just bear in mind that you do have to uh, scrunch it up a little bit to get the old one out and to get the new one in. So that's that. That's only a couple of minute job that. So we'll move in to get the air filter done now. Right, so coming into the air filter, this is this little uh, brace I was on the back. It's two 13 mil uh, bolts. Just uh, otherwise, you see down there, you're gonna struggle to get that little uh, Torx bolt out. You probably could get around it, but for the sake of undoing these two bolts, don't mess about, get them out. Right then, so that just pops off as you can see, two screws. So we'll get these screws here. I can see one there, one there, one there. I think there's only three screws, and then that should lift off from the back then. All right, so these are T25s. So we'll just start them off. Could have done with a screwdriver a bit, really. Right, let me just grab that extension bar. So you've got three screws here, little metal retaining clip there, just flick that off and then that should just uh, give you enough access there just to uh, pull this filter out. The box is pretty clean bar one leaf. So let's have a look at this filter. The filter's not too bad. Bit of crap around it, but it's a lot cleaner than that cabin filter. So as you can see, the difference in the colour of the filters. So it has done its job, that filter. It is due a change. So we'll just chuck that down there for now. Slide this one in, just pull that screw up so it don't damage the filter. There we go. That's sitting down where it should be. So just get them clips back in there. Push that metal clip back up and we can wind these screws back in. And again, that's only a 10 minute job. Once you've got this uh, brace off. So, so far it's been pretty straightforward and nice and simple really. I'm just hoping that when we come to do the oil filter, that it's not hard location. I think it might be underneath the vehicle near the drain plug, like it was on the Honda HRV that I've done. That was a nice easy uh, filter to do. So that's that all back on. We can go ahead now and uh, stick this brace back in. Don't go too mad. Drop that one down there. And there we go, that is the top job done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get the jack out. We'll get the van jacked up a little bit. It ain't got to go too mad because it's quite half the floor anyway. Just so enough we can slide under there and uh, get a bit of card on the floor because it's not nice laying on the gravel. So let me just get prepared for that and I'll bring you back once we're up in the air. Right then folks, it's about 20 minutes later now. The only reason being is I've got the vehicle jacked up and as I expected, the oil filter is here, so that's a nice location. But when I expected the drain plug, inspected the drain plug, it's just there, look, and I don't know if you can see, it's actually a square drive. Now I tried sticking a three quarter inch drive in there and that was too big. So what I've had to do, as you can see here, that was an old three quarter inch drive bit and I've actually um, sanded the edges down on the belt sander. So that does fit in nicely now. It did have a ball bearing in that side, so when I was sanding it down, I took the meat all off of this side where the bearing was. I didn't go too mad on this side. I just put a little edge on that just to take the rounded bit off at the top. So I didn't want to go mad on this side in case I burnt through 
and then we had a hollow and it would have been made it a lot weaker so i did take the facing edge off of this right side that's took me about 20 minutes just because i've had to keep going around to the back to the log cabin to get that and then coming around to see if it fits so it does fit in now but the only thing is i can only use it on a quarter inch drive so hopefully it's not too tight because i don't want to put a lot of strain on this little uh, ratchet as you can see that slots in there nicely now just give that it shouldn't be too tight oh i'm going the wrong way so there we go that's nice and loose actually so that's got me out of the crap basically so we can carry on with this job today otherwise i'd have had to go out and buy a tool for this job so that's just something to be wary of if you do come to do a, an oil change on one of these vehicles just make note what sort of a so sump plug you got on it so obviously this is a square drive and uh, i did make that out of an old uh, drive bit that we had so it's got me out of the crap so we can carry on with this job and this is the oil filter i believe that will be a 24 mil and i've just noticed on there look it goes up to 25 newton meters when you come to tighten that up so just uh bear that in mind when you come in to refit this so I'm just going to get me a bucket. I bought a couple of uh, washing up bowls, just cheap ones from the local uh, store. Right, again, i say it does hold 7.4 litres, this. So I think these buckets hold about 10 litres, I reckon. But I have bought two just in case. So if we do need to do a quick switch, we can do that. So let's get that just underneath there. And let's get ready for the pour. The second bucket is on standby next to us. Ready, here we go. So let me just get my cloth. I've just took the cap off as well, just to get the flowing nicely there. Right, it looks like we're going to get it all in that bucket, which is good. Again, I've got no record of when this was last serviced, so uh, it looked pretty black. But then again, it's a diesel, so it will do, but it's drained out nicely. We'll let that go a little bit longer and then we'll take the filter off and uh, that'll be the service pretty much wrapped up then. And always remember, dispose of your oil correctly. I'll take it down my local uh, landfill recycling site. They have a big drum down there you just tip it into. So let me just get the 24 mil socket while we're waiting for that. And there we go. See, I watched a YouTube video on it and the chap said it's a 24 mil. I tried that, it was too small. It's actually a 27 mil, so you can't always go by what you see online. So I'm just gonna go ahead and nip that up now. I'm not going too mad. Just to uh, make sure that's sealed, which I'm happy with. Just wipe any uh, excess off from around there so you know if you do have a leak. There we go, that's lovely and clean and dry. So next step is to get this filter out. Right, so just get that bucket there a minute. We'll just crack this. And I'm gonna try and get it all in this bowl so I ain't gotta use the other bowl and I can give that to Stacey as a present then. A new washing up bowl. She'll appreciate that. So it should start dropping some oil. There we go. Alright, let's just let that drip a bit for now. It's getting caught on that uh, pipe there, you see. That case. So we'll let that oil just drop out. There it comes 
happens. There it comes. Oh, that was a bit slodgy there, wasn't it? It looked like. All right, let's just let that drain out. I can hear that bubbling away now. We'll just pull that cartridge out. It don't look too bad. I've seen them in the past all squashed up. So that don't look too bad, that filter. Let's just put it in the house in for there for the minute. So I'm just going to get a bit of a uh, rake cleaner so I can clean that housing up and then uh, I'll come back to it. Yeah. Right everyone, so as you can see, I'll give that case in a nice clean. I've give this lid a lovely clean as well. I've also put the new O-ring on it that it comes with. So that's all lovely and new. Nice new oil filter, straight up, whichever it clips on anyway. So we've just got to get that up there like that. And it's just always nice to clean up, because you can see where you've been and that makes the job look a lot tidier. And you can see that the van has been looked after. So, there we go. Now I know roughly where I want to be, so there we go. 25 newton meters. If you've done a few of these cartridges before, you'll know what you're doing. So again, just one last uh, white round so we know it's all dry. So if we do get any leaks, we can identify where it's coming from. So as you can see, you can see where I've been. I've been here and here because we're all lovely and clean after we've done a job on it. The engine is dry underneath as well, so that is a good sign. I have noticed there was a little bit of misting on that uh, front shock exorber. Once I was laying under there, you can see it's a bit wet. So that'll be a job coming. All the drive shafts and the CV boots and everything else are bone dry. So just a bit of misting on that uh, shock. So we'll sort that out. I say we do need to do the fuel filter on it still. I believe that is just behind the passenger. I think it's just there, I can just see it. I don't know if you can see it in picture. Just behind that, uh, to the right of the axle stand there, it's just there. So that won't be in today's video. I will bring that to you. Let's get this van back on its wheels and then we can start putting some oil in it. Right then, so Sop is here. Now all the work's done. So I was just telling them this takes 7.4 litres of oil. Telling them? Why, why, why are you telling me? Because they was here first. So I might as well stick this one in straight away. Well, that's a 5 litre. Yep. You know, if you had these bottles on the side, it don't plug. I taught you that. That's the water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See? Comedy. That's what I do. Well, you could have got the next bottle ready. Sorry, I've got work to do. I'm out in the log cabin restoring, in, well, not restoring, repairing and repainting or powder coating in Izzy at the moment, folks. So what are you doing? Repairing it, painting it, powder coating it? Everything. I do the lot. I don't mess about. Right, I'm going to leave you to it because I'm it. busy, eh? I'll do it. I'm sure I'll check underneath. Always check for leaks, folks. Yeah, it's all good. Right, take that. I'm off. Yeah. Retro restore, don't forget, folks. Who's that? Right, so I'll just stick you on a little bit of time lapse for this because this is going to take a bit of a while. I'm going to carry on now and put all this in and I'll come back to you when we're nearly done. Right, so that's that first five litres in now. That's just draining off in there. As you can see, it is uh, fully synthetic and it's 5.30. And I say this was the recommended one for it, not the trade one. So I'm just going to go ahead now, stick the other, the other 2.4 litres in, and then I'll come back to you once we're up to the mark. Right then, folks, so I've put seven litres in. I haven't put the extra 0.4 in yet. So we're up to mark at the minute, but we've got to remember the oil filter casing will still need to be filled up. So what I'm going to do, just turn the engine, prime the engine a couple of times, and then we'll start it up. Hopefully that oil light will go out. We'll let it run for a minute and then uh, let the oil get around the engine 
and then we'll turn it off and we'll come and recheck this oil and see where we are if we need that extra bit or not so let's go inside the van so we do have the service light on as well on here so let me just turn the radio off right then so as you can see we've got the service light required just flickered up there service lights on down there um we do need a bit of juice but that's nothing to do with this video so oil light went straight out there it was down the bottom left there look ready so we've got good oil around it service required it says and we will be resetting that light so i think the way to do that is you've got two little uh that buttons up on the top here so if we just push the up arrow you scroll to the service required message i believe you hold your top button in for about 10 to 15 seconds so we'll just hold that in so then we go into service intervals hold that top button in again and there you can see oil change we are due so hold the button in and there we go so i've actually had the service light on for 100 miles so that's why it's deducted it should say 25,000 miles there so it's 24,900 miles or 24 months whichever comes first that's when the next service is due on this so that's all reset now so if we turn the vehicle off and turn it on that spanner light should go out once we start the vehicle which it has done so that's wonderful so we should have no messages on there now that's right so there's no messages for a service on. I think there's no other warnings on this van. So that's wonderful. And as you can see, the van's only done 65,627, which is nothing for this uh, aged vehicle. This is a 2014, so it's eight years old. So it's under mileage and uh, it's a good van. So I'm just going to check underneath quickly, make sure we've not lost any oil. Which it's bone dry under there. So I'm just going to check this again now. I expect it's probably dropped a little bit. Always clear it off before you take a reading. And there we go, it has dropped down a bit. As you can see, the marks there, and we've dropped down a quarter. So it obviously does need that 400. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit in. Just uh, leave that there for a minute. We'll get the last bottle. And obviously it just wants just under half of this. And that'll probably see us right there. Probably could do a bit more. There's only 200 gone in there. But I'd rather it just be under than over. So again, give it that reading. And I don't know if you can see what we're just under there. Look, and as you can see, that lovely clean oil is already going black already. So that's what happens with a diesel. If that was a petrol now, it'd still look a bit uh, clean. So that's that done. So we can drop this bonnet down now. The water's all good in it. I will do a coolant change on it. That'll probably be uh, when I do the uh, fuel filter. I won't be doing that today because I didn't get the antifreeze. I forgot. So that's that. As you can see, we've got a lovely new windscreen in it now. There will be a few more jobs coming up on this Ferraro now. Uh, I've got a couple of jobs on the ST I want to do, and once I've done them, I will be putting that up for sale then because uh, the money I get from the ST I want to start putting into this van to start doing uh, a few cosmetic jobs on it. And then I want to start in the back to doing the day van conversion build. So I will be putting a couple of side windows in it. I'm not sure if I'm going to go for the back door windows yet. I can always do them at a later date, but for a start, it'll just be the side windows. And uh, then we'll be starting to get in a bit of insulation in there, a bit of soundproofing and moving on slowly forward from there. I say it won't happen overnight because price of materials at the minute, it's quite expensive. That's why I haven't done nothing with this van really as of starting from now really. So things are going to start going forward on the van. There'll be a lot of good content coming up on this. I'm really looking forward to doing the day van conversion build on this. 
it's uh i think it'll do the channel good and it's something that i'm looking forward to doing myself and then once we are have got it done we can uh make a bit of use of it and do a few days out fishing down the beach even maybe going away for a couple of days in it and doing a bit of uh, sightseeing so that's all coming up in the future near future so if you haven't already don't forget to hit that like button down below subscribe ring the bell and get your notifications turned on and until next time we'll see you about